This is a podcast by The Straits Times. Welcome to Health Check, a podcast series by The Straits Times, hosted by Joyce Steele. In this episode, we look at why and how you should protect yourself against critical illnesses, even when you are in your 20s and early 30s. This episode is brought to you by Great Eastern. Cancer, heart attacks and stroke are the three most common critical illnesses in Singapore, and being inflicted with a critical illness can significantly impact one's life. This is, however, not something that many millennials and Gen Z think about. They're in their 20s and 30s, they're busy studying or establishing their careers. Health insurance is probably not something on their minds. And in fact, growing their wealth would probably take priority over protecting their health. So in the studio with me today for this episode are neurosurgeon Dr. Chow Ning at Chow Neuroscience Clinic and Eddie Lim, who's the Head of Propositions and Portfolio Management at Great Eastern. Welcome to the show, Dr. Chow and Eddie. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So, you know, we don't like to talk about cancer and other critical illnesses, even when we age, you know, let alone the millennials and the Gen Z, right? So, Dr. Chow, you've treated many patients over the years. So, tell us, what are the chances of a young adult developing a critical illness today? Like, are you seeing more people in their 20s and 30s succumbing to heart attacks and stroke? Stroke is a very common, one of the five common critical illnesses in Singapore. And about between 25 to 30 patients are diagnosed with stroke every day. And more often than not, we are seeing an increasing number of uh, patients in a younger age group uh, which are being afflicted with stroke. And this population, we are always focusing on risk factors in this group of patients. We're looking for things like transient ischemic attack, any history of high blood pressure, and any, uh, whether it's associated with diabetes, and any cardiac history in this group of patients. Basically, what we are seeing is that the incidence of stroke for the younger age group is probably between about 10-15% of the whole stroke cohort. So it is not uncommon. Right, so it does happen. But when it comes to insurance, usually when you're young, you don't really think about it, right, Eddie? Do you see that? Yeah, so I can understand when you're young, you feel healthy and you don't have dependence. You focus on your wealth accumulation. But I want to say that actually having a critical illness plan is part of risk management of your wealth accumulation, if I would put that way. Why? For example, in the event of a critical illness, you have an insurance plan. So the insurance plan will pay out and cover loss of income or whatever recovery costs instead of drawing down on your retirement portfolio or investment portfolio. The more they want to accumulate their wealth, the more they should think about protecting their wealth in the sense. So if you're focusing on wealth and not on health when you're young and healthy, that is actually the time to think about getting critical illness insurance because it helps to protect your wealth in the future, right? Uh, I would say that the insurance part protects your wealth portfolio from derailed in the event of critical illness. I see, right. So Dr. Chow, I mean, when it comes to that, right, can you tell us about the treatment journey, you know, the cost for like a new or recurring critical illness? Okay. I think when stroke happens, it is, at least to say, it's quite devastating. And the problem with this is that it is associated with a significant mortality of 15 to 20%. And of the survivors of the stroke, 80 to 85% of people who survive, 50% would still be chronically disabled after one year. So that means for 40% with rehabilitation, with a control of the risk factors, they're able to return to work. But another 50%, which counts about 40, 40, 45%, are still chronically disabled. So the financial component, the resources going to the rehabilitation program, the loss of income is significant. Now that is for the first part of the stroke. And for people who survive stroke, there's also the other component, which is recurrence of stroke. Because survivors of stroke will have a, at five years, the recurrence of stroke is quoted between 40 to 75%, depending on the resources brought in to control the risk factors of hypertension, diabetes, smoking, cholesterol, all this comes into play. So all these would incur costs and uh, it is significant, yes. You know, people think that medical life is enough. Um, that's the basic insurance plan that protects all Singaporeans and permanent residents against large hospital bills. So tell us why and when, you know, is it not enough actually? I think Dr. Chow mentioned a very important point on the disability post-stroke, right? 
And uh, I think it's the same applies to the other critical illness as well. So what a medical plan does not cover is uh, the outside of hospitalization settings. This is where the critical illness plan complements the medical plan. Right? For example, that's what Dr. Chow has mentioned. A large proportion don't have income or lost their income because they are unable to work or in partial income. And imagine if you do not have a critical illness plan, they have to rely on the family, that's a burden to them. Or if the person has a critical illness plan and able to even partially work, he will not have an option to even take a sabbatical. So this is how I see critical illness plan coming together and provide the financial security for the recovery phase. Find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or via the Google Voice Assistant and Amazon Alexa-enabled devices. And now back to our podcast episode. And now, back to Joyce Teo's conversation with neurosurgeon Dr. Chow Ning of Chow Neuroscience Clinic and Eddie Lim, the Head of Propositions and Portfolio Management at Great Eastern. They discuss why you should take critical illness more seriously in your 20s to 30s. This episode is brought to you by Great Eastern. Eddie, earlier you spoke about how a critical illness plan can help to protect one's wealth, right? As a critical illness can lead to income loss. And Dr. Chow shared that many stroke survivors will still have a disability even after a year, and some might not be able to work at all. So a critical illness plan can help because it pays out a sum of money if you're inflicted with a critical illness, right? But that's, I think that's not something that people think about, especially young people in their 20s and early 30s. Is that so? Yeah, I, I can understand. why they should, yeah. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> uh, like I said, uh, they, they are so focused in wealth accumulation. And just like if you were to have an iPhone, latest iPhone, you won't think twice in buying a screen protector. Mm. So similar, if you're focused on wealth accumulation, it doesn't really cost much to have a critical illness plan, mm. right? I mean, at Greystone, we have many types of critical illness plan to suit all budgets and needs. It can be cost as low as $20 a month to get yourself covered, 100000 for each 25 Up to some optional features that cover recurrence of critical illness, just like what Dr. Chan has mentioned, which is something I think a lot of people may not realise how likely a critical illness can recur in the case of stroke. It's pretty high. Would you recommend for somebody in their 20s, like a, if you're actually, you know, just gotten a new job, you don't really have a lot of money, can you start with something that's more reasonable and then pile it on? Or Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, like the young people would say, you only live once, YOLO, right? So let's not live with regret. The moment you start working, of course, get yourself covered with the best medical plan as you can afford to. And the next step is to ensure a reasonable critical illness cover complementing your protection portfolio. At the same time, while you invest for your future, that insurance portfolio will come in very handy to protect your investment portfolio as well in the event of a critical illness. It's not very expensive. When you are young, illness-free, that is the time where the young people should buy it because it is very challenging for someone to acquire insurance after the person has diagnosed with a critical illness. Right. But then, yeah, Dr. Chow, maybe you can share your view, especially in the healthcare industry where we see rising medical costs, inflation. People are thinking, you know, like, even if you buy something now in your 20s, how's that going to cover? I mean, assuming you are okay and then something happens to you in your 60s, right? That's like 40 years later. I totally agree. Because when I was young, there's this sense of invincibility. You never think of critical illnesses. But being in the medical profession, when you see these critical illnesses strike the younger age group, I mean, it is like a devastating blow. So looking back, if uh, you know, I would definitely get adequate coverage. I think that is the wise and prudent thing to do. Do you see a lot of these patients? I can just share that recently I just had a young 46-year-old man. I mean, he was well. He didn't have any transient temporary blindness or speech difficulty. He just had a little bit of weakness on his left hand. So he was seen in another hospital. They thought nothing of it. But when he came to see me, when I tested him, his left upper limb was severely ataxic. So when I scanned him, he had a small right corona radiata infarct. It's just a small little infarct. So basically, he had a small ischemic stroke. So I started him on the classic medication of uh, aspirin. And it took him a while, you know. He took him a while with uh, rehab and physiotherapy. Fortunately, he was right-handed. But 
right now, he still has got a little bit of problems with dexterity on his left hand. But otherwise, he's back to functioning normal. But of course, now he's just management of his uh, risk factors, of his hypertension and of his cholesterol. But there are costs involved as far as his rehab is concerned. And he was back to work after two months. Mm, right, but he still needs to take all the, the medication. Yes, physio. medication. He needs aspirin for life. Right. So Eddie, I mean, like for a critical illness plan, does it cover those costs? The good thing about critical illness plan, it doesn't detect what you use the money for, right? As long as you meet the definition of a claim, be it an early stage claim, early stage of cancer, for example, the money will come in very handy. Typically, a medical insurance plan do cover post-hospitalization but up to one year. And what happens to them after one year? Uh, this is where the critical illness plan come in very, very handy. Is there a limit? Uh, well, from what I know, uh, one year is, is the market practice now. Uh, but to keep the medical plan affordable, I, I believe that's a natural limit to the post-hospitalization phase. Yeah, so it's really important to have another plan to cover the rest. I think uh, Dr. Chow mentioned about this patient having dexterity. He may be suffer partial loss of income. Hence, once again, many, many scenarios that you will need additional funding. So you can claim from this critical illness plan if you had one? Yep. Typical critical illness plan don't, like I say, they don't detect what are the events. It's not a medical plan. So once you fulfill the definition, we pay you a lump sum, you can do whatever you want to do with it. So you pay a lump sum, then that's the end of the plan, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, if you're 46, that's really young. So in Dr. Chow's case, with a patient like that, and you collect your lump sum from the critical illness plan, right. assuming you have one, right? Can you buy another one because you already... It's very sick. challenging. Uh, it's very challenging to someone who have already diagnosed of critical illness to, to buy a fresh one. Hence, pro tip of the day, when you're young, do consider covering at least one time. And if you believe in the, the incidence of recurrence of CI, we do have features that cover recurring critical illness claims. So in Dr. Chow's case, this person, should he suffer another stroke, there will be a second payout, second lump sum payout on that. Event. I see those are the choice of plans you can actually right. choose from. Right. Eddie, thanks for that tip and for reminding us about the importance of getting critical illness insurance when we are young. And thanks, Dr. Chow, for telling us about the sobering consequences of having a critical illness, like a stroke. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap for Health Check, a podcast series by The Straits Times, hosted by Joyce Teo. Don't forget to share this podcast episode with your friends and family. If you'd like to read her articles, there are links in the podcast text description below. This episode was brought to you by Great Eastern. Thank you for listening. That was a podcast by The Straits Times. Send your feedback to podcast at sph.com.sg. Find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or via the Google Voice Assistant and Amazon Alexa-enabled devices. For more podcasts by The Straits Times, The Business Times and Money FM 89.3, you can also download the audio by SPH app. That's A-W-E-D-I-O.